In this video, I'd like to walk you through, in general, how a unit is laid out in this course, and then specifically how unit one looks, and just to frame some of the concepts that you'll first encounter in this unit. Um, so again, each unit will be its own Google Doc, um, and you can access those from either the Google Classroom side or from the Blackboard side. It will link it's the same document. Um, and the way that that document is laid out will hopefully be consistent from week to week, so you'll start to see the pattern. Um, so this week is a little interesting. You'll have two videos, one that's sort of the welcome to the course, and then this one which is welcome to the unit. In general, you'll just have the welcome to the unit video. The units will go for about two weeks for most of them. Um, sometimes with uh, the school vacations in there, it's a little bit altered. Um, as you scroll down the unit page, these items that are in green are items where there's something for you to do, um, and it implies that I'll be checking in on that item. So this week, um, joining Google Classroom and then setting up an at main.edu profile image, um, and that is adding either a photo or an avatar to your at main.edu account so that we have a consistent picture that um, is associated with your account. So instructions here. Um, unit one, um, so again, the blue here means that it's background foundational knowledge. There is not something in particular that I'm collecting or that you need to submit, um, but you'll need to do that work in order to prepare for the rest of it. Um, I'm asking you to just read over the course syllabus and then also the first three chapters in Creswell. Um, for chapter one, because this is so much new vocabulary, um, I did m make just a really brief reading guide that you're more than welcome to make a copy of and just take some notes on um, the big piece that I want you to start to get the hang of is the difference between the quantitative and the qualitative research. Um, and then on the next page, there's some branches within those domains that I'd like you to start to just take some notes on. Again, feel free to use. Feel free to use a different format. This is nothing that is collected. Um, so that's this piece here. And then um, this next one is actually, um, again, a task that I'll ask you to do, and that is to apply some new skills with reading research and making sense of it. Um, and so in the chapters that you'll read, there's actually two full research articles that are in the text. The first one starts on page 28, and it looks like this, um, a little bit different if you have the print edition. Um, and then there's one that starts on page 41. And one of those is quantitative and one of those is qualitative. And what I'll ask you to do is again create a copy of this form which looks like this. And you're going to create a full APA reference list citation. And for this, I'd invite you to do it as if it were not in the text, and that will simply make your life easier because citing something that appears in a text is a little more challenging. So for this, I'm gonna ask you to go just try and do it as if it was an article, and I've given you the link so that you can um, kind of see that information. And again, you'll have to work with your APA manual um, and some of the resources that I provided in Blackboard to do your best with this. This is um, a work in progress. And then try and fill out this document here um, for both articles. Again, when you come to class, I'm asking you to bring this. Um, it's a item in green. I'm not asking you to submit it ahead of time. And for this first go round, simply completing it, whether you do it in print or digital form, you know, it, it's is the goal. Um, it does not need to be at the mastery level. It really just will allow us to have a much richer conversation on February 3rd when we meet. Um, the next piece that I'm asking you to do is really to try and match up the theory and the practice. Um, so often in schools and in educational settings, um, educational research is sort of pushed out as other. And one of the things that I want to do is bring educational research to life through um, all the ways we can interact with it in a much more meaningful and applied way. So the first thing I'll ask you to do is to find a podcast that deals with an issue related to education. It does not have to be an educational podcast. And you're going to listen to an episode 
and look for a researcher or look for a podcaster who's linking to research. Um, you are welcome to use any podcast, but um, if you are not a regular podcast listener and this feels like a big stretch, um, I've given you some here. And if even still that feels like a little bit of a, oh my goodness, where do I start? Um, I have given you um, some specific episodes that you could use for this. Again, I'd recommend that you download it before a drive somewhere, before a workout, um, and use that time to just really think about after reading the Criswell, what does this look like when we start to apply it into our practice? Um, and then likewise, I'm going to ask you to kind of go out and just start exploring some new resources that maybe you're not using every day. For this, I'd suggest um, either searching the hashtag Ed Research or the hashtag K12 Big Ideas, um, or looking up one of these um, Twitter handles. You don't have to be a Twitter user to see other people's accounts. Um, and again, looking for two or three resources or research reports of interest. For this, all I'm asking is, is that on the third, you're prepared to share about the experience. You don't need to write anything up, um, but just simply being ready to engage in a conversation um, on the third. Finally, for each unit, I will have this chart of kind of what is the learning evidence? What are the pieces? What's the due date? Where does it get submitted? And then what outcomes are we working on with that piece? And then anything related to the assessment um, as well and sort of what part of the assessment. So hopefully this will give you a sense of kind of how the, how the units work in this course. Um, and like I said, um, for this first meeting, it's really to get some of that foundation, start to get you working with this vocabulary and these ideas. Um, and my expectation is not that you have mastery of this content. I thought it might be helpful to just quickly um, introduce kind of the key things to be looking for as you're reading. Um, in chapter one, focusing in on those six general steps in educational research. Why do we conduct educational research? What's the difference between quantitative and qualitative? And what does a research study look like? Um, and how might that be different than, say, a newspaper article or a magazine article or a blog that someone writes? Quantitative, remember, is number-based. The goal of quantitative research is to explain, and the data is in numerical form for this. Qualitative, the data is in words. You'll see much more the vocabulary of think, feel, wish, dream. And the goal is typically to explore in qualitative research. Um, figure 1.4, I think, is a really helpful one in the text um, and encourage you to just spend some time trying to wrap your brain around um, kind of what does that spectrum of methods look like in this field um, and bring your questions. Chapter two, um, for this, my, my goal for you would be begin to articulate the difference with the terms between a topic, a problem, a purpose, and research questions. These pieces are typically pretty muddy for folks as they start this content, um, but the more you work with it and the more you start to engage in your own work, um, you'll be able to separate these pieces out. Chapter three, really do skim chapter three. You do not need to do an in-depth uh, read on it. We'll spend a lot of our time in the first face-to-face -face on um, not only talking about this, but actually practicing some skills. Figure 3.1, I think it's helpful for folks to start to understand that there's this whole range of what folks might call research um, and that there's a range of quality and relevancy. And we'll talk about that range as we work through the class. Um, the other thing that I think is useful in Chapter 3 is starting to get a sense of the use of concept mapping in literature reviews um, because, again, I find often when students are new to this field, uh, the more visual that we make it, the more they begin to see the patterns and structures um, and the meaning that we want to construct from educational research, um, that it's not just a process.
So, um, you know, again, the research and practice, um, I'll have you work on some new skills of reading and annotating research, and then new ways of hearing and seeing information with the podcast and Twitter assignment. I think that's it. So, um, hopefully this gives you a sense of how to approach and handle Unit 1, and um, certainly email if there's questions or if you're not sure, but um, there's you know, we'll sort of start slow and then move into um, more applied practical pieces as we go into the other units.